Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. I hope you're all doing fantastic today. I'm Dinesh and welcome to my channel Coding with Danny. I'm absolutely thrilled to be here with you today and before we dive into nitty gritty of our topic today, let me share a bit about myself. We are here to talk about something that affects every single developer, every project and that is testing. Testing is like unsung hero in a software development journey. It's like the backbone, the silent guardian that ensures our application not only work but work flawlessly. So what are we diving into today? Well, let me give you a sneak peek. We are going to explore a game changer in the testing realm, something that has the potential to revolutionize the way we approach integration testing. But before we unravel that, let's understand why robust testing is crucial in the first place. So this is a classical testing pyramid. Here you can see how we move from requirement to code to different stages of testing. What we will be focusing today is integration test challenge and how we can use test container as your savior. Most developer either don't write integration tests or write a very selective set of integration tests. This is so true. Most developers do bare minimum unless your managers enforces that you must have X percent of code covered by integration tests. So why do developers shy away from writing these tests? Some top reasons are that they are time consuming, difficult to set up or integration test scenario is so complex that you just give up. Pick a reason that irks you the most but for me, I hated cleanup. And sometimes I am barred because of data pollution that integration test may introduce in the downstream services or downstream databases. Example, polluting my actual development database instance or dumping a test message to Kafka or other JMS queues that actually get picked up by downstream services and causes failure in these downstream services because they cannot differentiate between a real data and a test data. Now setting aside the issues, we came up with the following approaches to tackle the integration test issues. We still do some integration testing using various strategies and tools that we are aware of. The most common ones are using in-memory solution for database or setting up a local or shared instance of tool like MySQL DB, dummy queues or some form of sandbox to test against. Out of all the approaches, the most popular choice among developer are using an in-memory solution or these days Docker is our go-to choice of tool. But these solutions are still not enough and they come with their own set of challenges. Take for example in-memory solution. They solve some of the scenarios in most of the cases if we can find a compatible in-memory solution but fail or miss the mark when we need a specific version of the tool. The other issue is that not every service has an in-memory solution or if you do, you cannot set up strict security configuration that your security team has put in place. I don't know about you, but I have never defined table space, memory space or disk space for my integration test when I'm doing an in-memory solution or a Docker container. Neither have I defined a role-based access for a service. It has always been the vanilla version because setting this configuration is complex and sometimes we lack the skill and time to do Additionally, if you have large number of tests that are part of your integration test suit, then you may see some form of performance degradation because it is an in-memory solution and hence you are bound to see some latency or bandwidth challenges. Docker containers on the other hand provide us the flexibility and takes away some of the pain that comes with in-memory solution but they present some challenges such as lifecycle management of container or images, when to start and stop the container, you need to have additional skills to know how to set up networks, define volumes if you need to reuse test data and so on and additionally depending on what framework you are using you need to write a lot of boilerplate code even with Spring Boot you need to write some form of boilerplate code or maybe your own script to start those container at a given or specific time. So we have talked a lot about current challenges let's see these challenges in action with a small Sp Spring Boot project. We'll set up a simple to-do application that does basic CRUD operation. The to-do application will create to-do tasks and save them in a Postgres database. For setting up this database, I'll use Docker container. Then we'll write some integration tests to see some of the challenge that we have discussed in the previous slides. Let's go ahead and create a brand new project. We'll call this project as to-do app and we'll provide our group name as com.javahabit and we'll leave the JDK as JDK17. So rename this to com.javahabit and JDK Java will be set to 17. We're going to click next and from here we're going to pick up a couple of dependencies. One will be the Spring Web. Second will pick up Lombok. 
next we'll pick up postgres and the last one would be spring data jpa so we'll be we'll be using postgres and that's why we added the postgres dependency in this one so now we have the project created we'll add couple more dependency in our build.gradle so let's open build.gradle and now in our build.gradle we'll add couple of dependency the first one is going to be our jakarta persistence api we're going to add a test implementation for mockito core or mockito mockito core 4570 so let's go ahead and fix this first and now let's go ahead and start adding some code so in a to-do application the first thing we'll add is enable our jpa repositories let's go ahead and update our application.yaml file we'll rename this to application.yaml the first thing we're going to add over here is the port number and the context path in our case the port number will be 8080 and the context path will be to do next we'll add some spring configurations the first one we'll update is the spring application name and we'll keep the application name as to do next we're going to add the data source property the first one we'll add is the driver class name next we'll add the password i'm going to keep the password as docker password and for username i'm going to name it as docker user lastly for data source we're going to add the uri next we'll add some jpa configuration as well so let me add a notation here so that it's clear that this is a database config so we'll keep show sql equal to true and we'll also have ddl equal to true and we'll provide the database platform that we are going to be using hibernate so this looks good now we'll go ahead and create the our controller package and controller classes so we'll add the controller package and call the controller as to do controller we'll do the basic setup again provide all the basic annotation rest controller and the request mapping in our request mapping we are going to call this as slash api and to do app to do's app so we have outlined what we want to do now we need to go ahead and add all the service and pojo classes so let's do that and we'll mark this as an entity annotation and we'll have the provided table name that we want to keep the table name as is remember to add the jakarta persistent api don't think that postgres dependency that you added from spring boot when you were creating the project is going to take care of that you have to go ahead and add the jakarta persistence api now we'll go ahead and create our interface class interface uh, repository dot so let's put it as repository and although it'll, it's going to provide all of the standard CRUD operations but we are going to be creating an additional resource in there find title so we're going to add that particular class over here so over here we're going to add another a custom query which will be returning list of to do where we want to find to do by title and now we'll go, go ahead and create a service class it's an interface so we will simply provide all of the CRUD methods in here. So let's go ahead and start introducing them. And the last one will be delete. We're going to create delete by ID. We won't be testing it exhaustively. The main reason of adding all of this resource is to show what is the challenge when you don't use a to-do container. So the, the first phase of this implementation, we are going to be simply creating CRUD application. We'll be testing against a simple database you can think of the scenario where you may have to start up a container as a part of your testing and and or you may set up an actual database in your local and have to manage that i'm not talking about in memory solution in memory solution i've already told they are outdated now people prefer to do docker containers but it has its ch challenges you have to do a lot of co configuration at your own end which is why i'm just showing you the problem first before i jump on to test content and show you how it solves the problem so we are now implementing the service so i'm just adding all the methods so we're going to add to do find by id and this one should get to do by id so we'll add get to do by id by title create to do is the simplest one and then update so this is a very simple application as i mentioned earlier uh, the main focus of this is not on this application but how we test so if you want to create a complex project be my guest by the way uh so we have injected the service class so let's go ahead and create a cut mapping the first one we're going to do the get map to get all the to do classes so we've added all to do's this should return a list of to do and we're going to copy the same method and just go ahead and update the values because most of the methods it's almost the same just that you're going to be passing 
extra parameter here and there and maybe the return types are going to be different to do by id let's copy it one more time to add the information for find by title this will return a list of to do's and over here it's going to take a request parameter now we'll create our post mapping for creating a brand new to do it's a simple application i'm just trying to complete this as fast as possible pick up better names as i said i'm trying to finish up as fast as possible now we'll go ahead and create for update this will accept the path param id path variable as well long id and we'll have a body updated body which will have the update information and last one is the delete mapping so this completes our to do controller so i'm just going to go ahead and build the code and i'll remove the test class from here right so my code looks good now now let's go ahead and create a docker compose where we are going to be defining all the information related to the postgres that we're going to start in the docker so we'll provide the version number we're going to add the service as postgres and we're going to get the image first for the postgres we're going to give the container name we can define the port we're going to stick to the standard ports of 5432 and we are going to be providing environment variable for our username password so our postgres database we're going to put in as coding with danny that's our database name and we'll provide the username and same way we'll update the password as docker password next we'll add the health check networks so we're going to add our define our networks and we're going to call our network as to do network and we'll also go ahead and provide the volume as well and we're going to define the volume so that you know your information is saved whatever data you have been saving it should stay as is so we're going to provide local pg data let's go ahead and start our docker now everything looks good here so we're going to bring our docker compose up and we're going to provide the option as minus d because we don't want logs to be shown here and let's go ahead and check our docker and i see that the container has started let's go ahead and check the logs and we'll inspect the ip address as well in case you are using the pg admin please make sure that you are checking the ip address that is defined towards the bottom over here and use that in the uri otherwise if you're going to provide local host, it will say that uh, url does not exist but for me i prefer to use id data source id that is provided as a part of intellij so everything looks good it's localhost for me and i'm going to provide the username as docker user and docker password i'll put both of them here so that it's easy for me to ensure that i'm not making mistake we just need to update the database to coding with danny so test connection looks good we're going to click ok now if i do select star Make sure you're picking up this schema over here as coding with Danny because Postgres is created by default. So now that you have added that, if you're going to do select star from schema public, you won't see your table yet because this does not exist. Since we're starting for the first time, you need to start your Spring Boot application so that it can create the data definition for you. It's going to create the columns and everything else. So once it's started, now if you go and do select star, for all that to do you should see that the table has been created with the title and description so now we'll go ahead and add some resources over here add some data over here so we'll add t1 i'm getting an error so we missed the repository annotation we didn't inject that in the service class and now this should fix the issue let's go ahead and add yep this fix the issue so we added the first task so that's our first record entered let's go ahead and create a few more and let's also check our get all to do's I, all right so i see all the three tasks created let's go ahead and create our jnit test now we are using jnit 5 we're not going to be picking up any of the pre-existing method we're going to create a brand new test i'll go ahead and add the regular annotation spring boot test you can use whatever library you want to I'm just using Spring Boot test over here. Uh, for this one, I'm going to say that we are going to be using a random port and extend with this is the annotation that is used for JNIT5, Spring extension dot class. And we are lastly we're going to pick up the auto configure mock MVC. We're going to inject the mock MVC and the to do repository class. So just auto wire them in the test. We'll be creating our 
to do task and then we need to verify that task is created and then we'll try to get that task using find title find to do by title so we'll be making two http calls so let's put down our notes here so we are doing this to show that the data is actually inserted into the database. So each time you want to run this test, a data will be created in the database. And the whole point of this first half of the exercise is to showcase that we will be polluting data. And then we're going to fix this using test container. So I'm just going to create the to do task. So I've added the IDS six and we'll create our title and the description. We are now going to perform the mock MVC perform which will require the request builder. So let's go ahead and add that. Now we need to add the content. We are going to be adding the to-do object, but the challenge is this to-do object cannot be taken. It has to be converted to a JSON string. So we're going to create another method called create to-do and use object mapper to create a JSON string. And now we'll add our object mapper and create a new object mapper. I'm just creating it as a static one. But what you should do is uh, you should create an object mapper as a part of your setup because each time you're going to do object mapper is an expensive object which gets created each time when your test is going to run. So you can probably you should probably move it out into your setup if you're going to do that. So now our content is created. Now we're going to add a couple of validations. First is we're going to make sure that when the call is made to API to do's an object is created we should get back an http status equal to 200 similarly we're going to use the same result matcher to get the title from the response json so for that we're going to use json path and here we're going to use the core matchers so this method is complete and now we're going to create another method we are going to call the to do by title and we're going to make sure that the same title is actually created let me show you how it's it looks like if you're going to make a call so we're going to put the value as slash q and we're going to put key as title and the value as test three and going to hit send and we should get back a response run the test now we are missing oh i see we are missing the query parameter so I've updated the title key in there. Now the test should pass and we should see another record getting it. So our first run went through, but it failed in the validation find by title. So each time I'm going to run, you're going to see an entry create over here. So if you see over here, there's a test description three entered twice because we ran the test twice. So each time I'm going to enter, I'm going to see a record in there. Let's say you're a developer working on my service within the following architecture on the left, while you only use my service and its data store in you have several downstream dependencies which are shown in the blue that you need for local development and integration testing this brings the following challenges before running the test you must ensure that the infrastructure is up and running and is pre-configured in the desired state if the resources like database message broker are shared across multiple users or ca pipeline then the test results are non-deterministic because of the possibility of data corruption and configuration drift one way to sidestep this challenge is by relying on an in-memory database embedded service mocks or other fake replicas of production dependency however these approaches bring their own problem example in-memory services may not have all the feature of a production service and behave slightly differently and as i mentioned earlier not all downstream dependencies can be mimicked as an in-memory or may not have a way of replicating a mock. So test containers solve this problem by running an application de dependency such as database, brokers, any uh, uh, mocks services that you need, you need to mimic a downstream services. They can all be provided by test container and this helps you execute the your integration test cases reliably and repeatedly by talking to those real services and providing a programmatic API for your test course. In the previous example, you could uh, freely develop and test my services again real dependencies by provisioning them with test container directly from your. So we are going to be seeing um, how you're going to use test containers and how you're going to just focus on your integration test case. You don't have to worry about how this setup was done, what was the port number, what was the URL. That is all take, taken care by your uh, test container library. 
you just need to as a developer you just need to focus on your test cases so let's see how to do that so what we'll be doing is i'll be showing a uh, three different example one we're going to uh, use test container for our postgres we are going to be then also enhancing our existing code where we are going to be pushing something something onto a message broker so here i'm going to use rabbitmq you want to use kafka you can go ahead and do that but for my example i'm using rabbitmq and then we are going to be making a downstream call to another service and we'll see how we can use test container along with mock server to do the same so basically we are going to use test container for these three scenarios let's go ahead and uh, look at the code and see how our first test container integration test will look like let's go ahead and add a couple of dependencies before we start using test container so the first dependency that we're going to add is the JUnit Jupyter which will provide us a couple of annotations one is the test container annotation second is the container annotation and the second dependency that we need is the Postgres container. So the first thing we have to add is the class annotation called at test container. The first one is we need to define the what container we need. So over here we need a Postgres container. We'll also define what image should be used for Postgres. So we'll use the Alpine 15 image and I'm going to be using Postgres SQL container class which comes from test container library. New constructor, we are going to be now defining the name of the image. So the container is defined. Now we need to start the container before our integration test begins. So you can do it as a before all or you can do before each if you want the isolation between each test, meaning that for each test, you can start the container and then kill the container but for our scenario we are going to be using a shared database so i'm going to be putting it at before all so that every test that starts is going to use the same database so now i've started that i said postgre.start and i want the container to be killed the database will be shut down as soon as all of our test cases are done so we're going to provide after all and we'll use postgres.stop now you've defined that what about the uri now when your spring boot test run it picks up the database url from application.yaml we need to override that because we don't know what url will be created what is the port number that will be part of that test container so we need to override that and for doing that it provides the annotation Test container provide an annotation for setting up all of these dynamic configurations. So we're going to use another annotation called add dynamic resource, add dynamic property resource. So this will override your application.yaml. Now this does not mean that you have to always use random URI. If you have a need, you can even specify a very specific URL. Say I want a localhost colon 9000, for example, you can specify those. So this method takes a dynamic property registry. So I'm going to add registry dot add and it's not working. So oh, I need to make it as property registry, not as resource. Your annotation is going to be property resource. Your parameter is going to be dynamic property registry. And in the registry dot add, you're going to add the same configuration that you have in application.yml. So we have spring dot data source dot url username and password so you are going to be providing the same information over here as well this will make sure that your application dot yaml is uh, overridden by the information you have to put in and what will be the url we want a random url so when it starts up it'll, it'll create a random url and port number you don't need to worry about that so once this value is set up now you will only be focusing on your integration test which you have already written you don't have to update your test case this we have just done the setup how it's going to start up so we have picked up a url that is provided by test container what about username username is again will be can be a dynamic value or you can specify a hard code value so we have said that uh, get this as a postgres username and same way we're going to put in password now how it's happening and uh, how you can set up a hard coded value pre predefined value for your username and password you can go and check the uh, documentation is pretty straightforward and when the test run you will not be seeing the 
data getting added into your postgres container okay so what we are going to do is we are going to change this to test title 4 so that i can show you that there is no polluted data inserted into our actual database as a part of a test run and we're going to update everywhere because we are testing for test title 4 now and now when we'll run this test you will see that the test container starts and it starts the postgres container we'll try and look at the docker container list and see how it starts and stops at the end of the indication test so test is running we can see there are two container started and they got deleted and our tests have passed and if you see the actual database that is running on 543 closed for our actual application you won't see any polluted data inserted as a part of your test run so let's go ahead and add a sleep for 10 seconds in the after also i'm going to introduce a thread dot sleep right before the postgres container stops for 10 seconds so that we can see that the container is actually getting created and is getting killed as a part of test run if you want to log in into the database and actually see it's working you can probably put a debugger in there and find the value of the uh, jdbc url username and, and password that has been created by default and you can actually log in if you want to so if you saw they got created and it again got deleted we are able to see the whole thing now let's update our code to first add the rabbitmq and we will insert some records in those queue and we'll verify that data is inserted and we are going to see that when we write a test case again the data will be will be polluting our rabbitmq and how we're going to resolve that using test container so let's look at the problem now just like we saw for the database that will polluting the database and same thing will happen if we don't use a test container our test our integration tests are going to pollute our actual messaging queues which may be picked up by some of your downstream services and will cause them to break because they cannot differentiate between the actual test data versus the actual service data that a customer might be passing so let's go ahead and add the Spring Boot Starter AMQP library. And we are going to be again starting up RabbitMQ as a part of the container. And we'll use the Spring Boot AMQP library for replacing our boilerplate code for RabbitMQ. So we're going to create the configuration class as I'm, and we are going to be providing the value for URL and port number just like we did for database so we're going to put all of the values we're going to be in putting in the queue name so the first thing we need to put over here is for rabbitmq exchange name we're going to define that and i'm going to provide the queue name because again like i said the motto of this tutorial is not to show you how to create a queue and post using spring boot the motto is to show you how you can improve your experience writing integration test case using test containers so we added the queue and now we need to add the topic key next we're going to create the bean so that we can get the queue object back so this is set up now we need to set up couple more beans one would be for exchange name second one would be for routing key so define the exchange name and again we're going to just return the topic exchange with the exchange name the last one will be the key name or the routing key number so we'll add the binding and binding will take in the queue name we'll also take in the topic exchange name and we'll return the binding with queue name and exchange name and with the routing key so this is the configuration class that's the only thing we had to do now we'll go ahead and add all of those property value as a part of application YAML. So we, we need to define what should be our exchange topic exchange name, what should be the queue name and a topic routing key number. Uh, but before that we have to set up how spring configuration is going to connect to the RabbitMQ container. So it will be on localhost running on port 5672 and we'll have a username guest 
password as guest. So this will be used for logging into the RabbitMQ admin. And here we have to provide private configurations. And now we can go ahead and define our exchange queue and the top uh, the routing key number. So this sets up our configuration in application.yaml. Let's go ahead and see how we can produce the messages. And in our Docker Compose, we will go ahead and add the service for RabbitMQ. And we'll just run the Compose so that RabbitMQ starts. So let's go back and just start the RabbitMQ and image for management. And now we should be able to get to the admin admin so we're going to add guest guest as a username password and you can go and see channel exchange whatever values are present in there and now when we'll restart our application it'll automatically go ahead and create your exchange your topic names and we should be able to see what messages are being posted now since i'm not consuming uh, you would see that the messages are posted and they are just waiting to be picked up so let's go and add the produce a classes now to produce the message and there is some issue with the rabbit mq oh i think i provide the values incorrectly the format is not how i put it in so the key name uh, i see so the value the key defined in the application yaml had a hyphen over here so we're going to fix that and restart the application again and this time the application starts up correctly let's go back and check whether our, our topic exchange queue and everything got created successfully so if you go back to the exchange and check the value one more time you should be able to see uh, because we haven't posted anything the queue name might not show up so we we have to first go and add the code for pushing a message into the RabbitMQ. So we let's go ahead and add our class to do that. So we'll create a RabbitMQ producer class. And again, we are going to use the uh, template that is provided by Spring Boot using the MQP. And now we'll define the template. So we create the Rabbit template over here and we'll, we are going to use the constructor injection to in inject the rabbit template and now we need to uh, create a method which is going to be sending the message we are going to pass a simple message as a string message so with that service class defined now we need to find out a resource where we which will use to insert a message so let's do this uh, in our create to do method we are going to say that when the create method is called we want to insert a message into the queue put in the title restart the application and now whenever we are going to be creating a new task we should be seeing a message getting inserted over here so right now you'll you won't see anything so we'll go back to the postman and reuse our last post and we're just going to update the so it's created and now you see that the exchange is added and in the exchange let's see if the message was pushed so i'm going to go in here and look at the queues so in the queue i can see my queue name and i can now go and check the last published messages i'll pick up the first message that was picked up and i can see that the data is entered so this looks good I can go ahead and purge it and the information is now gone. So now let's go ahead and add the consumer as well. So that as soon as a message is published, I want something to consume it. I'm not going to create a separate consumer service. I'm just going to create a, a consumer class which will consume the message as soon as it is published. All we're trying to do is just to make sure that MQ scenario works. And then we'll write a test case where I will probably turn off the consume message off so that we can see that as a part of integration test, we are polluting the actual MQ. So where I'm going to add the rabbit listener, we added the queue name. So what is going to come in now is going to be shown over. So now if I 
go and run right now my queue is empty so we'll restart the application with the new code so right now if i if i if you see the queue is empty because the message has been consumed so it says got message t3 now let's see how we can go and add the test container for rabbitmq now i'm not showing you the if you would if we are not using test container why the data will get inserted into rabbitmq the concept is exactly the same like we saw for postgres uh, so i'm just going to skip ahead to show you how to use test container for rabbitmq all we need to do is add the test container dependency for rabbitmq again either define the version number or just leave it for gradle dependency to figure it out on its own so for now i'll give you the example of 119.3 if you're following along make sure you are picking up whatever the latest version is available or let gradle dependency figure out on its own so over here again process is exactly the same we are going to be first creating the container so we'll just copy paste rabbitmq container again you can look up the detail from the module documentation it's just a two line of code that you need to update so in this case it's a rabbitmq container doesn't take any um, generic code so we're going to we got rid of the angle brackets rename this postgres to rabbitmq container and this will be the rabbitmq container and we're going to provide the image name that we need so again copy this from documentation or if you want to use a very specific version you can you can specify that test container can take care of whatever version you're providing so whenever you are picking up this container make sure you you are picking up a very lightweight image so alpine is pretty light if you find something even lighter than that the the whole reason is going to take up less space and the content is going to start up uh, slightly more quickly compared to other version same way we are going to first start the rabbitmq container and then stop the container if you if you are using shared version you have to use it like this if you want it to be isolated use before each and after each to start and stop the container and we are going to add the dynamic url and passwords for rabbitmq if you want you can specify a hard code value as well or a predefined value but i'm just going to pick up the default value that are provided as a part of test containers so we are going to add the spring rabbitmq property as has been defined in our application yaml if you're using id this is very easy at all already with a control space it'll give you the the complete name that is already available you don't have to switch back between application yaml and this file to figure out the names if you don't remember so we got the host and now we need to get the port number one thing you need to remember is if you're going to be looking at the method name in the autocomplete you'll see a port and an amqp port make sure you're using the amqp port because i i had it as a get port get http port but that is not the the right you have to get the amqp port so do not add http port use amqp port otherwise your you will your you'll start seeing issue that uh, container is not set up properly so we're going to define the amqp port next we're going to add another property so this one will be for username and password so remember we were we were using username guest guest over here it could be anything else admin username same way we're going to provide the password it could be admin admin it could be xyz some random value if i have time i might show you using the debug but for now let's go ahead and add and that is all that is need needed again you just add the property so if you if you don't start up if you don't have this container and now you are going to run the test i'm going to just uh, remove this um let me show you what happens if you don't use content i know i said it's not i don't want to show it but it's pretty trivial so let me show you what will happen i'm going to remove the rabbit listener as well so that the messages stay so that way i'll be able to show you that what happens when you run the test integration test without a cont without a test container you'll see that the messages are actually getting posted to your actual queue which may be picked up by some downstream services and 
will error out because they're all test messages. So if I run this, my test will of course run. And if I go in my actual queue right now, if I'm going to get the message, I am go I'll be seeing that I got polluted message on my queue, which I don't want because these will be picked up by downstream services because they're all listing on there. Okay. So now if I, if I, I'll just go and change to test title five and let me go ahead and update. And now we're going to push this message using test container on the rabbit MQ instance that test container starts and stops with, with every test. So now that we have added it and let's run the test again. So now you'll see that the second message also got posted test four and test five. And now we are going to re-enable our test container for rabbit MQ and rerun the test and ensure that our actual message queue is not getting populated. So now I'm enabling everything back again, RabbitMQ stop and replacing the configurations or dynamic property resource. Now, if I'm going to run this test, you would see that there is no new messages that have been posted in my actual queue. But before that seems like I made a mistake somewhere. Let me figure out what did I do? Let's see, it so looks like I have not created the image properly. Let me go ahead and fix that. Okay. So according to the documentation, it should be rabbit MQ management. Okay. So I fix that and now everything should work properly. So my test is now running and my thread dot sleep is already there. All right. So now if I pull the messages, I will see that I am still seeing the last two messages, which were pushed before that. So now I'm going to purge it and We'll rerun the test one more time just to make sure. So my queue is still empty. I'm going to rerun this test. So now when I go back and look at my actual messaging queue, I would still see that the messages are not getting posted. Instead, they're getting posted on the test containers RabbitMQ. So if you see there is a RabbitMQ also created over here. So the messages are getting posted over here, not in the RabbitMQ under the to-do app container. So now my test is completed. All the container are removed. Now if I go and say get messages, you'll see that the queue is empty. See, let's go and work on our last example of how to use test container for calling your downstream services or backend services if and when they're not available. So to mimic that, I'm going to be using a third party mock service on the type code URI. So basically this provides you a couple of free services. We're going to use a service called post, which will give us uh, three records. I believe uh, if you, if you're looking at this URL, you can go here and click on try a server and on post, you should be able to see three records in there. So if I access this particular URI, I will get three records back. Coincidentally, they have the ID and title just like I'm using my to do. But the idea is if and when you're working with uh, in a multi team scenario, you may be developing this service along Along with their backend where they've just provided you a swagger API and you've been asked to create your code but on the day of the deployment or maybe a couple of days before deployment your backend says hey I am not ready so you cannot test my request and response and now you are stuck because you cannot run your integration test so what people typically do is they create a standalone sandbox services or they set up some form of wiremox server to test their to run their integration test and see whether the code that they have written is working or not. Because if their code is working, regardless of whenever the URI backend service is, is coming up, if I provide the correct URI of the backend service, it should, it should behave the same. So in our case, we don't want to do that hassle. We want to test our code without doing this additional work of setting a wire mock or current NAT or any other sandbox services, right? So we'll use a test container. And for this, I'm using mock server module and not a uh, wire mock. So mock server is exactly like wire mock with, with slight differences, how it works. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll set up a test container with wire mock, which will return the same response if my backend service is not available. So there is a reason again, I picked up a uh, mock server one because wire mock module is already provided as a part of spring boot. But the test container version of Wiremock is uh, is still in the development stage actually. So if you go on the uh, test container website and you go on the main website and you click on the modules and if you search for Wiremock here and you can go on the GitHub and over there you will see that it says that it's in the uh, still in the 
development stages it works i have tried it out uh, but i didn't i didn't want to i not pick pick it up for mocking a service in the test container so which is why i picked up mock server so mock server uh, here is the example so as i was mentioning before you don't have to remember the class names you can go on the modules and you know look up the class name and the image name that they're using and you can mimic as is so again even on the documentation they have specifying that wire mock it's in development stage so which is why i picked up the mock server so now let's go to the mock server so this is the class which i need to pick up and this is the image name so we're going to use this on our side this is on jdk 21 is it i don't know anyway we'll we'll go ahead and do exactly the same so the first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and add the dependency so we are going to go and first we will go and um, create the controller let's add the dependency later first we need to make a call to this uh, type e code third party services so let's go ahead and create the controller and we're going to create a different request mapping so let's go ahead and create a request mapping as slash api slash post and this will have only one uh, get mapping which will be a very simple call and it's injected now don't worry about all the red marks we're going to add that shortly uh, next we'll add the get mapping so let's go and create the dependent classes now the first one we're going to create is the post now we'll go and define the post service let me go ahead and move the rabbitmq producer and consumer to its own package i don't want to pollute the packages create the service class and here it will just return the rest template get for object we're going to define the post uri followed by the resource name so the resource name over here is let's go back to the type e code okay so we can copy this value and dump it over a type e code demo post so this is a resource now i could have defined the whole thing as a uri but i want to show you an example of when the server itself is down which is why i i'm going to put in only the server name and the post dot url property and this will return a post list of posts so this is all looks good now and now we need to go ahead and define the properties so here we need to define what is the what is going to be the uh, base url so we'll we're going to copy paste the base url so post.uri is the property that we have to use so we'll add post.url and the type e code value so http let me copy paste the value so this is our value and now when i am going to restart this application and call the uh, resource that we have defined in our controller class i should be getting back three posts from the downstream services so let's test it out so i already have tried it out so i'm going to just reuse the same resource or i can just type it out if i want so i can get the three records now let's go ahead and add a test integration test for this and we'll assume that the backend services has added their code and they're deployed in their server and we have access to the service so if if that is the scenario of course our integration test is going to pass so let's showcase that and then we will mimic a scenario where backend service is not available or backend service is down which typically happens that sometime your deployment schedule is not in sync with the your downstream services and Coincidentally, you are running your integration test at the same time when your backend service is doing their deployment. In that case, your integration tests are going to fail. So let's mimic the happy path scenario first. So we are going to be writing a standard test case with Spring Boot test. my first record is post one so this is working now now imagine your backend your backend service says that hey we won't be ready because we have some other properties so to mimic that what i'll do is we will create a incorrect url to mimic that backend backend has not deployed the application okay so now if i run my test case my test will fail because that service is not available right so it's going to it's going to complain that it's not ever so how do we do that so as i mentioned you would have to use 
set up a sandbox server or have to set up a wiremark server and add all the configuration so we are not going to use do any of that we will instead make use of test containers so i'll first go ahead and add the dependency again it's exactly same process for any module that you use from test container you simply go ahead and add its corresponding dependency as a test implementation so we're going to copy the org test container and we are going to define the mock server Again, I don't have to tell you the version number, make sure whenever using the only difference between between this is that you have to add another dependency for uh, mock server. It's not just one and all of these you can actually pick up from the uh, the module documentation for test container. So over here we have to also use the uh, mock server netty 515.0. So there are two pieces which you need to add for mock server if you're using test containers and one more time uh, the process is exactly the same we're going to add the test container annotation and then we are going to define what image we want for the mock server so we're going to define that we have a container that's a requirement for uh, mock server so let's go back to the documentation because i believe it's very specific so we are just going to copy this whole information from here let me copy the whole thing actually so mock server container the only difference i've seen is in in couple of modules you have to provide the image name with docker image dot parse so we have to add the mock server client so again if you see this is this is coming from the dependency which we just added and now we need to start the container test container for mock server and stop the container now we need to do a little bit extra because as a part of this we also have to define what should be the response coming back when you hit a particular url so in our case we are going to set up some of the values for mock server as well that is what is the port number for the backend URL. So if you if you remember um, the URI which we added is post.URI. It is it is our custom property. It is not part of the spring property. So when you are providing the configuration under the dynamic property resource, we have to provide the property key exactly as we have defined so that it can be it can override the uh, value in the it can override the value from the application.yaml file. So in the mock server.get host, uh, this is exactly same as uh, if you use the uh, colon colon get get host. I'm just showing you another way of doing it. So you can just do it normally without using any lambda functions. Now remember this post.uri, right? Um, it is only over here you still have to uh, pass the if, if you have to add any values add any uh, say path param or query param uh, you would have to use the lambda call so mock server dot get server host server post or the other way to do it is So what I'm specifying here is that get the endpoint URL that I've specified and when the resource type echo demo post URI is called on that server, I should be getting a value, a dummy value that I'm going to define now. So in my case, I first want to create what is the response that needs to be returned back if call goes to this mock server. So I'm going to define a before each method. I can do a before each before all just showcasing multiple ways of doing it. now that we have this uh, we need to define our mock server client dot request so now what we're defining is that when the mock server is called on that url the random url that will be created we want to return a response equal to json value so we're going to define the with method get and we're going to define the path so in our case our path was type code slash demo slash posts and now we're going to define the response So 
So now this particular URL will be replaced from the application YAML with the random URL and will be calling the type echo demo post will be appended. So if I run the test case now, my test case should pass. So now if you see all of my test cases are passed. Now to showcase that the response is being actually read from the test container mock server i'm going to be saying that the title is going to be post 10 so if i do post 10 my test case should fill to mimic or showcase a scenario that the i still don't have my backend url and the container is started up so now you'll see that my test case is failing because it is not calling the actual url because actual url we have specified as a wrong url and if actual URL, URL was active, it would have given me back post one. So here is the example that the call is actually going to the test container version of the mock server. So we had a 10 and we have a one. So at this point, um, the registry.url, as you can see, it has been uh, populated. So if, if you want to, again, want to see that what is the random URL being assigned, you can always start it in debug mode and see what is the URL that has been assigned. So if you put a breakpoint and you, you are going to be hitting that URL from the postman you will get a response so let's see what is this url and the port number that gets assigned this time so if you go in in here and i'm going to evaluate this get endpoint so that's the url and the port number that got assigned if you even hit the port number you also get the port number starting with 63 so that's how it works so if you if you go to the test containers right there are like hundreds of module available under each section you have for all of these different type of databases oracle presto postgres mariadb now these are all relation databases if you want for no sql databases you have these many options over here even for a one for neo4j for graph database dynamodb and also has a uh, formation on the mimicking the cloud actually so most common ones are again if you're using no sql mongodb and redis are the most common one they're they are readily available same way if you have message broker these are all the message broker that it uh, supports today so artemis if you're using active mq you can use artemis uh, these are all the uh, cloud services that you can use so this is how you use test container for three different scenarios and i have a request for everyone uh, to do let, drop me a comment and let me know if you like to see detailed videos for example in this one i spent 20 minutes to just to create a crud application my main motto is that people who are new to spring and java should be able to follow the tutorials from scratch if you feel that it's not necessary and you just wanted to jump to the test containers i can start building videos in that way where i can publish all of the code on github for setting up the basic crud application and just focus on the meaty part that is how to use the test containers so do drop me a comment like and subscribe this video and do let me know if you want to see any other tutorials in future